Testament account gives us just a glimpse, an, an intriguing and completing partial mosaic of the birth of Jesus. The different viewpoints of the chronology of timing of events are overshadowed by the all-consuming truth of what occurred and what became of that holy child. This is the testimony left to us by those who encountered the Master. test which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked at and our hands have touched this we proclaim concerning the word of life the word became flesh and made his home among us we were finally allowed to gaze upon the glory of the Lord and once we beheld his glory we could hardly look away
same again. Only the mind and heart of our Creator God could have brought all these events together. Nothing like this has ever occurred and there was more to come and it's still the greatest story ever told.
story ever told. Glory in the highest. God has come among us and we will never, never be the same.
In just a short couple moments, we'll have the opportunity to join with the choir and sing together the finale for tonight's program. And you will also have the opportunity at that point to express your thanks and appreciation for what you've heard tonight. I just want to take a couple short minutes and address the theme of what was discussed tonight or sung about tonight, and that is the theme of the greatest story ever. And it reminds me of how much I've always loved stories myself. As a young boy growing up, my parents had to tell me a bedtime story in order to put me to bed at night. I'm sure many of you are the same way, only I was a little more difficult. Uh, after a while, it wasn't good enough for my parents just to read a story out of a book. They had to make a story up and tell me a story when I would go to bed at night. And my dad would, would lay down with me and he would just tell me a story, maybe a story from a movie we saw recently or a television program or whatever, but I loved to hear stories. I would even pester my grandfather to tell me stories and he and I would make up stories together uh, throughout the day and stuff and we would add different characters and different plots. Those stories could get very, very long, in fact. Um, and, uh, and I continued my love of stories over the years, uh, even uh, doing reading books out of the library. Uh, just for a second here, a library is a building uh, with, uh, with books and stuff in it. And, uh, and so I, I, enjoy, uh, I enjoy stories even to this day. Uh, and over the course of my childhood and my teenage years, my love of stories kind of took two different tracks. The stories I particularly enjoyed were basically had one of two qualities to them. Either one, they were stories that I could participate in. So stories that I would myself would write or help put together with other family members or friends. In fact, some of my friends and I would get together, we would write stories together, and we put ourselves, of course, as characters in the story. We'd, of course, be the heroes in the story, naturally, uh, and we would enjoy doing that. I also enjoyed the Choose Your Own Adventure books, if you all remember those, uh, and going through and reading those. And so any stories that I could participate in, I, I especially enjoyed. But I also enjoyed, on a separate track, another quality that attracted me were true stories. Uh, stories that weren't just uh, made up by some writer's imagination, but stories that actually happened. And this is, to this day, I still love true stories. It's why I love history. Uh, the root word of history is story. And many people grow up thinking that history is just memorizing a bunch of names and dates. And that is not the case. History is a collection of stories, uh, stories of incredible achievement, for men and women have, have uh, aspired to accomplish great uh, things, uh, sometimes surmounting tremendous obstacles in order to do so. And we today are shaped by those stories. And so I love history. I love participating in stories. I love letting the imagination run wild. But tonight, you've heard a story that actually takes advantage or actually has among its attributes both of those qualities. And by that, I mean it's a true story and it's a story that we get to participate in. 2,000 years ago, the events that you just saw represented before you actually occurred. 2,000 years ago, a baby was born in a manger in Bethlehem, and that baby changed the world. The entire calendar changes on the birth of Jesus Christ. Even though today, Many people are trying to erase that, and they're trying to rename it. So in most uh, schools today, they no longer say B.C. or A.D. They just now say uh, C.E. or B.C.E. But guess what? You can call it whatever you want to call it. The calendar still changes on Jesus. Amen. The fact of the matter is Jesus is the most significant figure ever to walk the face of the earth. Yeah. And he is significant because he is real and he is true. And not only is it a true story, but it's a story that he wants to make you a part of. And so my question to you is, are you a part of his story? Or are you a spectator to his story? I hope that tonight, when you come and you hear this, I hope that you can rejoice with us because you're a part of the story. I hope you've made a choice and a decision to believe in Jesus Christ, to stake your life and your soul on Jesus Christ, to accept the gift of eternal life that Jesus Christ offers to us, to accept the forgiveness of sins that he so graciously gives to us that we do not deserve. I hope you've made a decision to be a part of the story because it is the most incredible story. And it's a story that has a beautiful ending. You know, the wonder, the, the stories, that the classic trite is that at the end of the story, they all live happily ever after. Well, guess what? That really happens in this story. 
Those of you who accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, who choose to participate in this story, for you, you get to live happily ever after. Because this life isn't all there is. The best life is yet to come. And that life is eternity with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so I hope that you've made that choice and that decision. If you have not, I hope you will seek me out or someone who looks important here tonight. I hope you will <laughs> seek them out and let us pray with you because you can't make any more important decision than to be a part of Jesus' story. And with that in mind, I would like to now invite all of you to stand as we sing about the joy that Jesus offers us. Is that better? Okay. So when I picked this song, I thought it'd be, since you're singing with the choir, I thought it'd be really cool to do this the way that dynamics are in there. I'm a big person on dynamics. If you're in my choir, you know that. When the, so we're singing How Great Our Joy. While by the shepherds we watched at night, glad tidings brought an angel bright. So it goes, how great our joy is really loud. But then it goes, how great our joy, very soft. And then joy, 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 joy. So we're going to sing it with the dynamics, and hopefully you'll feel a part of that great joy that we just celebrated here tonight as these kids gave us our live nativity, right? Amen? Amen. Awesome. Amen. Let's sing. together like we did tonight it takes a lot of people working together rowing in the same direction and all kinds of moving parts and stuff and everything from uh, just helping facilitate the parking to making sure the building is ready to setting up the stage uh, to the audio visual in the back uh, to uh, the children and the choir and everything there's a whole lot of parts involved and so I just want to thank our audio visual ministry our child care workers I want to thank all of our volunteers and I particularly want to thank our music ministry and especially our choir under the direction of Dee Barnett for just a tremendous job tonight. Let's give them a great round of applause. Yeah. And, uh, and I have a special place in my heart for young people and so I just love seeing these kids up here and, uh, and so I just want to say, kids, great job tonight. Thank you so much. I 
I hope you will all join us as soon as we're done praying. We are gonna head over to the fellowship hall. Please join us for some refreshments over there. This will be the prayer of blessing for that food. My understanding it's finger food and, and you know cookies and stuff like that. So I'm not gonna pray for God to bless it to our nourishment because that, that would be pushing it a little bit, but, uh, but I will pray to thank God for it and, and thank those who prepared it. And so, uh, but seriously, I hope you'll join us for fellowship over there. If you have any questions about anything that's been covered tonight, I hope you will seek us out. We would love to talk to you. And I hope you will come back and see us. We're not having a service Wednesday night this week, but we are having a service Christmas Eve at 7 o'clock. Tonight was 6. Christmas Eve, what time? 7 o'clock Christmas Eve. We'll be here. And then Christmas morning, no Sunday school, but we will be gathering for worship service 11 a.m. Christmas Day. And I know that Christmas is a family day, but let's understand ultimately it's Jesus' day. And so, um, so I hope you'll join us Christmas Day uh, as well. Uh, let's go ahead and be dismissed in prayer, and I will see you over in the fellowship hall. Father, thank you so much for bringing us here tonight. Father, I thank you for just things that we take for granted, like safely getting us here, Father. We're so grateful for that. Father, we're thankful for the greatest story ever told. We're thankful, Father, that you loved us so much that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, into this world to be a sacrifice for our sins. We thank you for that love that we do not deserve. Father, I want to thank you for all the hardworking volunteers in our church to put a program on tonight. Lord, it takes a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of anxiety at times and, and energy. And just, uh, Lord, I just want to thank you so much, Lord, for the choir. I want to thank you for, for the audiovisual people, the child care, the children. Uh, I want to thank you for Judy and Dee organizing this. I just want to thank you for all the hard work that's put into this and our fellowship team in the back and just so many people, Father. Uh, and Lord, I just thank you for this wonderful church, Lord, and for the people here and the love that they have for you and the love that they have for each other. So Father, I pray now that you'll bless our time of fellowship and bless this food. We thank you for it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.